You're watching Ham Radio Concepts. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date and keep up on the action. Oh, it's ICOM 7100 series again. <laughs> this is Eric, KJ4YZI. If you haven't checked out the previous videos on the 7100 I've been doing, I'm just trying to knock them out and show you some various things that you can do with this that I plan on doing. Now, we've talked about the radio itself in a video. Just showed you how to do WinLink sending emails over VHF with this same radio. And now I'm going to show you another functionality, not only of the 7100, but in D-Star in general. A lot of radios are capable of this, and not everybody really knows this feature exists. So this is something that's been around for quite a while. I'm just now getting to it. The radio comes with this USB cable. And this USB cable says in the manual that it connects to the radio for control of the radio, sending audio back and forth. But really, besides something like a computer-controlled uh, CAT program, what else would you use that for? How about DRATS? That's right. Not D-STAR. D-RATS. R-A-T-S, which is star spelled backwards. DRATS has been around since the dawn of D-STAR. And we're going to talk about it, and I'll quickly show you what you can do with DRATS, and I'll just have this set up on my 7100. Maybe I'll take a trip out to the truck outside and show you how I set it up with the 5100. So if I'm out portable, I can use DRATS, and for emergency communications, this is by far one of the hottest modes and utilities that you can use for emergency communications, ARIES, uh, search and rescue, what, uh, hurricane events, and more. DRATS is where it's at. Let's check it out. So setup is real easy. I'll just show you on the back real quick. The thing about the 7100, the 5100, the 4100, the ID51A handheld, yes, you can do DRATS with a handheld and some other ones as well. But the, these newer radios, like the ones I just mentioned, have a built-in sound card, including my 7300. All you need is a USB cable, which comes with the radio here in this case, plug from USB to your computer. It loads the sound card drivers. And at the same time, that'll also key the radio and do all the functionality to use DRATS. So that's all you need. Just the USB cable that comes with it. Plug it in. That was an easy setup, right? Now, if you want to do this with a different type of radio, like my 5100 or an ID51A, you're going to need a different cable because those don't have USB ports to handle this um, like this one does. So this is an RT Systems. RTS-05 cable. This has a USB to serial converter in it. It's got the 2.5 millimeter three conductor tip ring sleeve on the end. And this is actually a programming slash uh, data cable for those you know, specific radios. So you may need one of these if you, for, for instance, me, I have the 5100, I use this on that. And uh, back in the day when I had a 51A handheld, this is what I needed for it as well for DRATS. So think about this if you're having uh, to get into DRATS and you have a radio other than the 7100, you're going to need this. Let me take you to the internet for a moment. And first, before I do that, I'll sum it up in about one or two sentences. If you asked me, Eric, what is this DRATS? DRATS was designed to utilize the backbone of DSTAR and the digital throughput, digital communications through DSTAR, not only for talking, but for sending messages, real-time chat, sending files and pictures, emails, ICS forms for emergency communications, radiograms, memos, and more. You can do all of that with DRATS over the same digital DSTAR that's going out to a repeater. You can do it with DRATS. So I'm going to take you to the internet for a second. Because the reason I'm doing this video is I haven't found quite a lot of information as far as DRATS. I remember DRATS from back in the day of when the ID1 was first released, and they boasted about all this high-speed digital, but you thought, what do I need high-speed digital for? My voice can only go so fast. How fast do I need to send my GPS coordinates? Well, again, like I've said in APRS in the past, it's more than just for basic talking, DSTAR has a lot more functionality to it for digital data, for sending and receiving files and sharing a folder on your computer for emergency communications, 
hurricanes, all kinds of stuff. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to the internet, and the links are in the description, but just to give you an overview, if you go to a Google search and you just type in DRATS, you'll see I've been to most all of the websites that are here for DRATS. I could tell you that this video right here that pops up, the DSTAR Infocon Segment 3 from ICOM, is a really good video, but it's you know, a presentation at a Dayton, Oham, a Dayton, Ohio ham fest. And it does have some information, but all of these sites here pretty much tell you the same thing. Get DRATS, download it, and you're on. But really, yeah, besides what I've just told you, let's see it in action. Let's do something with it. Let's let's make this part of our D-Star entourage that we have on our desk or in our vehicle. Emergency communications, you know, this is what we do. So, what you can you can click on these links here and you can see about you know for instance getting started with DRATS and it'll there's a PDF here and I've read this it'll show you links it'll show you about setting it up it'll walk you through it and tell you what they are this page right here is very important because if you don't set your radio up exactly like it's supposed to it will not work so for my situation the IC7100 is a 9600 baud rate that's a very important number here in a few minutes. And it shows you if I'm using a USB cable, this is what I need to make sure is turned on or off. And if I'm using a data cable, this is the configuration. And the same thing happens with other ones. But you can see here, if you have one of these radios, you can do DRATS. Look, even back as far as the ICV82, my friend has one of those. That was one of the original 7-watt VHF or UHF D-Star handhelds. And funny enough, the board for that was twice as much as the radio costed. But it was still you can see it's still possible, okay? So you need to learn the sections of the menu that you need to turn on or off. You must have GPS turned off. If you see all these, GPS has to be turned off for this to work. It has to be turned off in the radio for this to work. Disable your GPS. Third time I said that. So other than that, you can go through here and check it out. It's got some good information. But like I said, it just shows you basically where the menus are and what it looks like. But let's get into it and go to dstarinfo.com and download DRATS. You can go right here, look. DRATS. And it'll give you the latest for PC, 64 or 32-bit. You want to download this, install it, and we'll go right into DRATS communications tool. Now this is the DRATS software. And this kind of resembles a, a version of WinLink or RMS Express on steroids because you, you see up here on the on the tabs up here you have messages, chat, files, event log. You can share a file or a folder on your computer and in the event of a Aries um, disaster or a hurricane or search and rescue you can have several computers set up sharing folders to where you can get these forms you need out in the field when cell phone and computer internet doesn't work or is not by you, you can get it over DRATS. It's a really cool concept. So you could also have real-time chat, messages, email. We'll show you this. So without being a complete instructable, because there's plenty of those on the internet, I'm just going to show you a couple things. There's two ways of using DRATS. You can use DRATS with the computer and internet with no radio in sight. If you've never owned a radio in your life, you can use DRATS. Then there's the other way of using a 7100, a 5100, a 51A handheld with a cable and interfacing it over RF. So I'm going to show you both ways real quick. The first way is through Internet. So in the file menu, you want to make sure you're connected to Internet. You click that, it'll put a check mark there. Okay. And in the preferences, this is where you're going to set up your stuff. Now, those PDFs I showed you give you a lot of information on setup. But the main things you need is call sign. Your name is good. I haven't touched anything else on this page. And then you go to, I go to GPS. I put in a rough coordinates of my location because, what did I say before? Turn your GPS in your radio off. That's a big problem for people when they can't get it working. So there's my rough coordinates. Haven't touched anything else. And then the last is going to radio. And in this pane here, you're going to see a few things. Now, to explain a little bit more about this right here, this is called, what you see here is an entry for a rat flector. Now, on D-Star, when you're using 30 Charlie, you're using 1 Charlie, you're using 4 Bravo, you're connected to a reflector. And that's a reflector, if you're familiar with D-Star. You're on 30 Charlie, everybody's on 30 Charlie, you're all talking amongst 30 Charlie. That's the reflector you're on. 
for Bravo, even on Fusion, YSF reflectors or DMREF talk groups, the same thing. For DRATs, they call it rat flector. Just a kind of another fun name to distinguish between a reflector and a rat flector. So a rat flector is where you're going to communicate. This is what comes in the program as you download it. This is a public worldwide rat flector. So a basic public rat flector. And uh, you have Georgia Aries rat flectors. You have a Texas rat flector. It depends on, you know, from what I read online, Georgia Aries, emergency radio, emergency service, or amateur radio emergency service, uh, are big into DRATs. And uh, it's a good reason why. So we're just going to, for now, leave this on the public rat flector to show you the internet side. Okay. Now, We'll leave. You can only check one of these at a time. You see, the other entry is my radio. That's COM17. That is my radio entry. And you can go down here to add. If you need it to first put in your radio, you want to just name it, you know, whatever, and your type. So serial would be directly connected to your radio with a cable. Network would be over internet. Then you can use a TNC for this. You could use a D, uh, DVAP or a dongle. You could use uh, AGWPE. That's a software KISS modem or software TNC. So Serial would be for your radio, and then your serial COM port, if your cable is not in this drop-down, just enter the number in there. If your COM port 4, put 4 in there. It'll work. Should work. And then your baud rate. And remember I showed you on the other page, your baud rate's very important. This must match the baud rate of your radio, or it's not going to work. So my 7100 says 9600 baud. And that's what I'm going to choose. And then you can add that in. Now you'll see you have a radio. And let's say you have more radios. Let's say you have a 51A and a 5100. You can add those in. And as you switch radios, you can check the one that you're going to be using. We're going to leave it on the rat flector for internet use for now. And I'm going to click save. The rest of that stuff can be modified or edited to your needs. I'm not going to mess with it for now. Now, if you, you see all these, these call signs here, I'm going to wipe those out for a second because you may see nothing when you get this running. All you have to do, if you're connected to the internet, okay, and you're on the rat flector, go over here and right click in this window and go ping all stations. And that is going to send a message out. You can see down here in the bottom left, it says KJ4YZI pinged, and then it shows you the stations are calling or coming in. It's basically asking, hey, who's on here? Can I get a response from them to, to see if they're on? And it loads this list. Now, a lot of these are automatic stations, some of them. It just depends on how they're running it. And, you know, honestly, I haven't got into that depth about what these people are doing. But they all have a purpose, and I'll try to show you here in a minute. So all these stations here are in the chat, the window up here. This is your global, your your uh, your chat room here. And DRATS right here, copyright, Dan Smith, KK7DS. Now you can see here, unattended, now online. It shows you where they're at. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Um, for what they're running so this is a chat room it's just as simple you can see down here where do you want it to go I'm only connected to the rat flector so yeah I want to send a message to the rat flector hello all kj4yzi that was it I'm in a real-time chat if there were others in here and that's what I'm hoping this video generates interest there will be a lot more people in this rat flector where you can have real-time chat now again this can happen on the internet and this can happen over radio. The difference though is if you're over radio, you're not going to be connected worldwide through your repeater. It's basically going to be the people in your Aries group or locally that are also participating in DRATs. You can communicate with them through a repeater uh, locally. And you can read more about that. But I was under the assumption originally that you can go into a repeater and connect across the entire world. But I think that would be a lot of traffic on a local repeater because every time one of these pieces of information comes back, if if somebody's chatting in here and there's 15, 20 people chatting, every time that message comes back, if you're on radio, you it would have to key up your repeater. It would basically tie up the repeater. So your repeater would constantly be tra uh, passing digital data back and forth. And to the person that's not aware, all they see is that repeater kertrunking, kertrunky. They can't see anybody or hear any, anybody talking. It's just digital data. So that's why if you're on RF, you can do it amongst your local group or your local repeater, um, your buddy down, down the street from you or across town. You can transfer files and do all that, but you couldn't do it across the world. That would just be cumbersome with 500 people in a, 
a chat room to have to accommodate for the repeater and everything else. It would be really stressful on a repeater owner. So, okay, you're having a chat. Of course, nobody's in here, and maybe after the video, more people will be in here. What else can you do? Well, you can open a private chat to a specific station and have a chat with them. You can join a certain channel if there are different channels on a reflector or rat reflector. You can add filters. So if you want to filter out automatic versus, you know, online stations or whatever, you can filter them out. Now, we'll go to uh, messages here. Messages is where you would have uh, email. Your email, you can you click here. You can see that you can write an email. You can write an ICS-213 form, which is big in emergency communications and ARIES. Uh, memo, radiogram. You can send all of this if I sent email. Destination call sign. If I wanted to send an email to um, here, W1JKU, W1JKU, that would go to him. And if I needed to relay it to somebody to get to him, I could send via, and I could pick another station to relay it off of. Okay, we'll go back to send email here for a second. Uh, that was November, no, Whiskey One, Juliet Kilo Uniform. I could type a subject test. Hello from KJ4YZI. I can hit send and then I can go to send and receive. And it's you can see down here on the bottom. Message transfer of foo started. I'm not sure what foo means, but it's sending right now. It's sending him an email and it's going to pop up in his program as an email. And as you get people sending and receiving emails, You'll see an inbox here. You know, you have your inbox, your outbox, and what have you. That's all. That can all go over D Star RF and internet. Okay, so think about that. A little bit easier, I think, than because uh, you can send it via WinLink as well. WinLink 2000. So you have WinLink messages and you have DRAT's emails. Okay, so it's all in it. So my message is sent. He's got that. So. Uh, if he got it or when he got it, you know, from my understanding, you can't send an email to anybody that's not in this list. Once they come online, it will send. Up in the files here, now the files section, actually, before I go there, I, was, I took a break for a second and in the chat. I was talking with somebody here, KB9JVY in Savannah, Georgia, just making some conversation. Um, okay, so file transfer. That, that may be one thing you need to modify in the preferences so that you have... Uh, your path set up correctly for file transfer because you're not sharing your entire computer. You're sharing a simple path for a folder for files that you put in there that are accept accessible to others. I haven't done anything there, so it's probably why I've shown you all these different files in here from a folder that I didn't even choose to share yet or, or however. But the files, uh, you know, you could, once you, you could go in and, and uh, right click on someone, send a file. Um, you can connect to them and download files or, you know, you could do that kind of stuff on file transfer. Great for if you have forms that are updated every couple of hours in an emergency situation about, uh, you know, your supplies and they update uh, the shelter information. You can download that remotely over RF in worst possible situation or on internet while the internet is up. Um, so you can do that instead of emailing, you know, you can get it right through here. Okay. So check it out. I just signed in on another mobile laptop that I use for DRATs or have loaded for DRATs. I haven't turned it on in a while. So you can see here now I have KJ4YZI-2 up here. Okay, and the thing about DRATs also is in the event that you're having a local, uh, you know, local use for this, you can use tactical call signs. So if you have tactical call signs for various positions in an organization, you could use that too. But I just have KJ4YZI-2. Maybe the other station here, um, Dash H is home, and he has another one for mobile. I'm not sure. Um, but so this is my other computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this computer that you can't see, and I'm going to send me an email from my laptop, and you should see it pop up here in my inbox. Any second, waiting for a response. 11% sent. Just waiting here. 100%. And there it is. There is my test email. Okay. So that's, you, you might think, well, what's that for? Basically, it's like a radio radio message or a DRATS message so that if you, you know, it'll stay in your inbox and you can keep these in your inbox as it was a mail, you know, program. 
So you can go reference these later if there's attachments. You can see here you have attachments that you can add to it. And, you you know, it'll be your inbox. for You can see the whole event and all the emails that you traded with people as you were in your emergency response or for fun. Guys, again, this doesn't have to be zombie apocalypse. Use this for fun. Keep in mind that if you're in the public, public chat here, I mean, I wouldn't... Uh, Use it instead of your cell phone and block it up, but get in there and ask questions, talk, experiment, try it. I guess that's what it's for. You know, I mean, if, if it wasn't for that, nobody would know how to use it without trying it first. So I'll send the email back, and this time I'm going to try to attach something, and I want to see um, how long it takes. We're at KJ4YZI, and I will attach something, I'm not sure. We'll do a uh, shipping label. All right, I'm gonna send that. And you can see here, send and receive. There it goes, message transfer of foo started. I don't know what foo is. But on my other computer here, I should see that 92%. So yeah, it is a little bit slower. It's not the fastest thing in the world. But ask your friends if they can send an attachment or a form across radio waves to somebody else and there's the attachment on my other computer here. I should be able to double click it. All right, and down here you see the attachment. Attachments on the bottom. And there it is. Shipping label. It's saved on my computer. Go to save. There's a lot of things going on here with DRATs that a lot of people aren't aware of. Now, what I'll do is, this is internet. So what I would do is take me off the internet, go to preferences, okay, and I'll go to radio, and I'm going to turn off the rat flector, and I'm going to turn on my radio. And at this point, now I'm going to be on RF. All right, so I have the radio in the screen there. You can see I have the DRATs open, so there's nobody in this list here. I cleared it out. Now I am on radio on RF, not the public reflector over internet. And uh, I even have internet turned off. So I'll go to right click and hit ping all stations. And if in the event you were local and there were other people that were in DRATs, instead of them constantly reporting that they're there, it waits for a ping. So you, I ping and it's going to send the thing out to the repeater saying, hey, is anybody, is anybody connected? Who are you? And whoever is, is going to come back in the list. But you can see here. I really don't get anybody, and that's because there's nobody on DRATs in this area uh, through this repeater. So this is where you can experiment with your buddy. Now, again, keep in mind, you've seen what just happened on the screen. I'll do it again. Okay? It basically just keys, nothing said, and other people that are monitoring DSTAR will see that, and they'll say, what is this guy doing? Just pushing the button. So it's pretty good. I've already done it. It's pretty good to say, you know, KJ4YZI, I'm going to be playing with DRATs. Uh, identify who you are. So that way they know. If it's in the middle of a conversation or QSO, try not to do that. Um, or use a different module, perhaps. However, you could do it without interrupting local traffic. That may be more priority. So, um, but you see there that if that was, if that was worldwide, tied to worldwide, and that thing was going constantly, nobody would be able to talk on it, you know. And, so that's why you turn the GPS off, because the GPS normally goes alongside your, your audio, but, you know, together with the 4,800 uh, bits per second, but it rem you remove GPS, and then it uses that whole stream for this DRAT. That's why you have to turn it off, because you can't fit, you know, um, your DRATs and your GPS in the same stream there. So there's nobody here, but you can practice with your friend or your buddy. Get a couple people online with one of these D-Star radios, Get them familiar and help them out. Get them set up. Get the software installed. Even get a computer of yours and set it up at a remote location and play with it. Uh, practice it. Um, you can do this for my. You can do this on Simplex as well. So if you're wanting to practice, pick a Simplex frequency that is able to be used on D-Star and do it that way first. Then use a repeater for extended range and however you branch out to do this. I got to tell you, I'm going to learn some stuff from other people on DRATs or comments or however. So if, you, if you're interested in DRATs or you are a big-time DRATs uh, user, please leave it in the comment and teach me something. I'd love to hear it. And also, there's a way of looking at this on a map. So if you want to find the position of a certain user and see it on a graphical map, 
there's a map download utility that comes with the software and it'll be in a folder wherever you install the software and it'll allow you by with the latitude and longitude and the diameters and miles it'll allow you to download a map and it says right on here attempt to fetch all the required tiles for a given center location and desired diameter and this operation fetches a lot of small files and can take quite a long time so once you download this and it saves into your system you can be on the uh, software and pull up somebody's position and see them actually on a map and voila you request position and you can pull it up on a map here and see exactly for the map that you downloaded now I should be able to zoom out a little bit no see I don't have that data I only downloaded zoom 14 I can go in and zoom in I can't zoom out okay so pretty cool stuff if you have others in your area and you download the larger maps which will take a while you can see them all on the map as well here's one thing to note when you do plug in your radio to USB and you get it uh, the sound card installs you're going to have two USB ports here or two virtual ports on your USB and it's important to know that this one will be for port 16 or com 16 will be for CIV com CIV commands and some other stuff and 17 will be what you're using for low speed data and uh, USB functionality so I'm going to be using that's why I have 17 you need to see which COM port if they load two of them the second one should be the one you're going to use for DRATs to interface with the port on the back of the radio all right guys that about wraps it up in the effort of burning my entire weekend to make videos for you guys because I like doing it give me a little bit of effort and leave a comment and let me know that you learned something new or you plan on using it or you have been using it for a long time again this is a hobby it doesn't have to be zombie apocalypse we can use this kind of stuff for fun and just look though what happened in Panama City only two months ago in October that Hurricane Matthew hit and they lost everything Hurricane Michael excuse me they lost everything and once again ham radio up there prevailed as one of the only forms of communication that happened I mean that's it so use this maybe I'll find you in a chat room we'll chat say hi we'll try different things you know and, and try it with your friends try it on simplex try it with your other radios let me know how it works for you and keep it in your your pack here for things to do or things that work when everything else doesn't ham radio that's what it's there for seven three